The next mission that we'll cover is <laughs> a lot more complicated. Starship. Delays, delays, and all sorts of things going on. What is what is the the been the progress for 2023 regarding Starship and what does 2024 look like? This is so hard because there are these entrenched groups who are ready for a flame war. And so as long as I piss off everybody equally, I think I will have done my job. So in early 2023, April, we got that first launch of the Starship Super Heavy stack, and it destroyed its launch pad, and the thing came apart pretty quickly after launch and then was detonated. And they didn't meet any of their objectives, right? Like their objective, well, I guess they got off the pad. You could see right from the beginning of the launch that several of the engines weren't working, and it just kind of got worse from there. The launch that they did just a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago, anyway, um, the launch they did more recently, late November, was much more successful. Um, they had completely rebuilt how the pad works. So they have what they call a flame diverter, a big steel plate that was underneath the launch pad, which diverted the flames, prevented the fire tornado that caused all of the damage from last time and it was able to get off the pad as you could see it lifting off the pad you could see all of the engines were burning nicely and it did its separation and then it exploded <laughs> so the one ad addition that they added to it this time was that they're going to do something called hot staging where normally originally the way starship was going to work was that the the super heavy would sort of slow down and it would sort of split itself apart and then Starship would take would ignite its engines and continue the journey up to space. And that was too difficult to control. And so they shifted to something called hot staging, which has been done before. But it meant that Starship fired its engine while it was still attached to Super Heavy and then it and then it was able to detach and then continue the flight. And so we got that hot staging and that worked perfectly. And then Super Heavy was supposed to do a, a like sort of flip over, do a burn back, and it w didn't seem like it was able to reignite its engines, and then it exploded. And then Starship, and this is the one that's more kind of confusing because we still haven't gotten like an official breakdown of exactly what happened with Starship, but it continued on sort of beyond what we could see, and then we heard that there was a loss of signal, and people have were sort of downrange, were able to track, and it looked like the thing came apart, some cause that made it break apart, and so it wasn't able to complete its half of the journey either. So, in theory, the next version of it is now being prepared for launch, and because the launch pad wasn't destroyed, these other rockets were ready to go. We should see a launch within a couple of months, the next test. And hopefully this is the one that'll sort of meet all of the, the objectives that they had. The Super Heavy will launch off the pad, will, you've got the hot stage separation from Starship, Super Heavy will flip itself over, do a burn back, land softly in the ocean, um, and then Starship will continue on, do some kind of suborbital flight and then do its own soft landing, you know, re-enter, do a soft landing off the coast of Hawaii, and we should get sort of a completion of the mission. But SpaceX also has a habit of skipping steps. So if they feel like they've learned enough from that first launch, I wouldn't be surprised to see them do something more complicated, like do a full orbital launch. There's like a rumor that they might also be attempting to do a practical test of a cryogenic propulsion pumping. So one of the requirements that NASA has for SpaceX is to demonstrate the Starship can pump cryogenic fuel in space. And so because the future human landing system version of Starship will need to transfer like like 15 launches to transfer all the cryogenic propellant to the version that's going to go off to the moon. And so they just are demonstrating that they've got this skill down. And so one theory is that they're going to put a pumping system inside Starship. And then once it's up in space, try to transfer propellant from one tank to, tank to another to demonstrate that they can do this space-based cryogenic transfer. And like this is becoming a problem because the Artemis 3 mission, which is in all other ways, 
moving forward. Like the rockets are almost built. The plan was to launch this at the end of 2024. It's been shifted now to the end of 2025. This isn't long. And it's heavily reliant on the SpaceX Starship as being the landing system. And so between now and the end of 2025, I mean, let's be honest, let's be serious, it's going to be 26, maybe it's gonna be 27. But Starship has to be has to launch successfully, has to be able to fly one of these tankers to space, has to be able to transfer propellant, has to do 15 to 20 additional launches of Starship, transferring propellant to a tanker. And then the tanker has to transfer the propellant to the human landing system. The human landing system has to go to the moon, has to test land on the moon and fly back to space. And this all has to be done before Artemis 3 is ready to launch. That's a tall order of steps that SpaceX is gonna need to do. And they're really now in the middle of the critical path. And so if they have more delays, then we're gonna to start to see all of Artemis three start to slip based on that. At least we have yet another rocket system that is now on the menu or coming on the menu. And it is Yole. Yole has developed the Vulcan rocket. And that is a replacement for Delta and its Atlas, its previous rockets, which were venerable, you know, to say the least. Yeah. But now they have a new one. Um, what does the Vulcan rocket system offer us? So, the, I mean, the Vulcan is United Launch Alliance's response to the Falcon system. And we're at this point where it's kind of ridiculous because the Falcon rocket, the Falcon 9 rocket launches all the time. Um, SpaceX almost hit 100 launches in 2023. They've been launching the regular Falcons. They've been launching the Falcon Heavies. Like just a couple of days ago, a Falcon Heavy rocket just launched a the X-37B into space. And who knows what that does? But anyway, um, and both side boosters launched, landed successfully. Like these things work great. And so the Vulcan is United Launch Alliance's response where they're going to try to create or provide more reusability in their rocket system. And so the main part of the booster, the big fuel tank, that will still be disposed. But in the beginning, the engines will be reused. And the plan is to like have the engines fall off the bottom of the rocket and then be collected by helicopter. And then over time, they will develop more and more reusability of this rocket, hopefully getting to a point where they're starting to match what the Falcon is, is capable of. And they have have yet to test that first Vulcan rocket. It should happen this year. Yeah, so like we could just be a couple of days away from launch the first launch of the Vulcan rocket. Who knows how much it will actually be reused? Like this is just a first test flight to show that the system even does its job. And then we will see hopefully more and more reusability over time. But it, it seems kind of crazy compared to how far along the process SpaceX is with Starship, which is a fully reusable two stage rocket compared to Vulcan, which is gonna be a partially reusable booster and then a disposable upper stage. And so I think it seems kind of bizarre in this modern age to not be building fully reusable boosters like what Rocket Lab is planning to do, like what Blue Origin is planning to do. The Chinese are doing this. Like this is the way. SpaceX has demonstrated that you reuse that booster. And, and so hopefully, ULA will be able to get the kinds of savings and be competitive. Because I, like, I don't want SpaceX to just run away with the whole market. I want there to be competitors. I want there to be a vibrant launch market. But we'll find out if they'll be able to do it. Now, what of Blue Origin? Where are they at? And we've been waiting and waiting, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so there was the last launch of the Blue Origin New Shepard back about over a year ago. And then there were some anomalies in the flight. And so they took a break while they were testing to figure out what happened. And they finally did a new flight of New Shepard just a couple of weeks ago. And that is, of course, the suborbital flight where they, they fly up to the edge of space and then detach the capsule. Capsule returns by parachute and they do a bunch of science experiments. And it's, you know, it's vastly less energy than going full orbit. But Blue Origin has been working on their new Glenn rocket, which has a reusable 
first stage, like, but it's bigger, but like Starship, sorry, as a reusable first stage, like Falcon 9, and then a disposable upper stage. And this is going to be their response, their heavy lift response. And they've got lots of contracts, but we just haven't seen tests of this rocket. It just keeps shift drifting and drifting and getting pushed back. And now we're at the point where the hope is that they're going to do a test. The rumor is they'll do a test in 2024, but who knows at this point?